Well, we're in a predicament right now in southern Iowa where, you know, both parties at the Capitol are really taking advantage of these rural Iowa towns down here. Uh, there's a quote I've heard multiple times, we kind of forget, you know, under I-80 and, you know, the towns below that. But, you know, you have both parties voting in favor of bills that help, you know, big cities like Des Moines, Waukee, Ames, Iowa City. But when it comes down here, you know, we're losing jobs education is underfunded, schools are you know, struggling to stay open, we have a crumbling infrastructure down here, but nothing's being done. And you know, we have two parties of the capital that are just bickering back and forth and nothing's getting done. And well, the thing is, is I just don't think we're being properly represented down here. I think we need someone who is strong enough to stand up to either or party if something is very dangerous that is going to pass down here, stealing money away from rural Iowans who are paying taxes, we need someone who is strong enough and has the fire and passion to stand up for what is right, to defend us. And that is what I'm about. I, you know, I may be 25, but I deeply, deeply care about where I'm from, and I want us to survive down here. I mean, the priority is to make sure we have opportunities down here. And very recently, this is a good example, our DOT in Centerville just recently closed down. Our current representative, Larry Sheets, did not approve the budget that the directors of the DOT tried to pass. They asked for a very specific budget of $9.7 million increase to the, the current budget that they had, but the House Republicans cut that in half the budget, or the increased budget. So the DOT directors warned there could be possible consequences or closures. And they've said that many, many times to the legislators, but they still voted that way. So what happened? Appanoose County lost their DOT. So why that's a concern to me as a legislator in this position, there's not a lot of jobs in Centerville. And the thing is, people have to travel back and forth, you know, to go to Cargill, Hy-Vee, you know, certain jobs that, you know, to pay a good wage. But when you have winter months and we don't have a DOT, you know, Albia has to go all the way down to the Missouri border to clean our roads. Bloomfield has to go all the way through Highway, or Highway 2 to clean the roads. They can't refill in between. So that is going to leave for dangerous road conditions. People might have to move from Centerville just to suffice, you know, trying to battle going to work or not. And if someone wants to say, like, well, move closer to your job, you pay taxes. You should have clean roads. It should be a priority of the legislation to go forward and say, hey, maybe I should take in the consideration of risking, you know, my constituents' lives and maybe voting in favor of making sure they're safe. But he didn't do that. And jobs are leaving. And, you know, my hometown of Centerville, we have tried to do a very good job of, you know, trying to bring in new manufacturing jobs to the area, but it's, it's hard. Because when we look at a small town like Centerville, who is shrinking, and we don't have a DOT now, it's uh, where, why would you want to start a business in a town like that? I want to make sure there's opportunities for businesses to come in. But on top of that, we need to make sure that our businesses that we have right now stay open. So I want to propose lowering taxes on small businesses and local manufacturing, primarily because, you know, that's rural Iowa. That's the heart of it. You have, you know, local businesses that you know you know the people's names when you go in you have you know small manufacturing jobs that pay well they have good benefits we don't need to be given tax cuts to some big business like rockwell collins doing tw well so research credits is what the state has been doing as of late so going back to that so they rockwell collins gets 12 million dollars to do research every single year that they would be doing regardless and these are a lot of businesses that are taking advantage of that system, which could be used towards helping small businesses and local manufacturing jobs to promote, you know, growth, staying open, and causing them to, you know, create more jobs. But we're giving it to these companies who aren't paying taxes, which I feel is just wrong. Well, you know, I've done a lot of research into cannabis and what THC and CBD does to individuals who can use it for seizures or other conditions like fibromyalgia. And uh, it's, you know, the D, they like, they, it's not proven by the drug enforcement that it actually does it, but people see results. 
And sometimes we have to take that in consideration that people are getting benefit from this. There are some, you know, I've been told that, you know, certain children who have seizures, you know, 20, 30 seizures a day who get on, you know, some type of a cannabis oil and they stop completely. And, you know, that taking that in consideration as a legislator, if that is going to help children and that's going to help adults, you know, make their lives more enjoyable and contribute to society, absolutely I'd be in favor of that. But as a state, are we ready to move forward in legalizing marijuana? That's probably a different issue, and I don't know where I'm at on that. But for oils and medicinal use marijuana, for medical purposes, absolutely I would be in favor of that. If it helps people, of course I'm going to be in favor of it. Well, and this is where I talk about the corporation tax credits and tax cuts. So when we have big businesses who are abusing this system and taking multiple millions of dollars, of taxpayers' dollars, to do something just basically to exist in Iowa, well, the thing is, is we need to take priority in these smaller towns who are struggling to stay alive. So I want to be in favor of at least controlling how much money these corporations will get in these tax credits and tax cuts. And we, when we can do that, there will be a lot. I mean, multiples of millions of dollars that will open up. Because when we have the top five corporations who use research tax credits, in the last five years, from 2010 to 2015, that was $216 million that we gave to these companies that are doing absolutely just fine. And that's a lot of money that we can invest towards, you know, giving to small businesses, helping our rural Iowa schools, infrastructure, and making sure our water quality is great. When we have, you know, smaller businesses taking a few thousand dollars from these, that's fine. You know, but when we have these big, gigantic corporations that just don't need any more money taking millions and millions of dollars, that's the issue. So if we could work together as a legislator to make sure there's just a limit to that, you know, if instead of taking 12 or $10 million to maybe cut that in half, but not to take that into effect with the smaller businesses that do need it. And you know that could open up multiples of millions of dollars that we could be investing towards other things or in f fact create a surplus. Well, as I said, I would like to maybe invest it more into the small businesses. If someone has a good idea and doesn't have a lot of money, if we can make it so they have an opportunity to start something up and get a little bit of help from that, that's great. Because you know we have, our population is growing. Well, obviously not down here, but if we can have it some type of an interest, like, well, if you come here, we have the credits for that for a small business to start up down here, that's an opportunity that a lot of people could have, and that could blossom into good paying jobs someday. W what I view a research tax credit as is giving a business that has a good idea, but someone who is struggling, and giving them a little bit of an advantage. So when we have someone who is not struggling to stay open and abusing that with multiples of millions of dollars versus you know someone smaller who has some good ideas but just aren't getting as as much, you know that's that's kind of I want to take priority in my district. You know we're struggling down here, but when we have these businesses who are abusing that, that's kind of where I'm at with that. Well, I feel right now our property taxes are way too high in rural Iowa. Appanoose County is one of the top in the states who are just burdened with property taxes. And does that have to do with population? Kind of, sort of, yes. But when we keep taxing people, you know, with those burdens like property taxes, but we're not really getting anything back from that, that's kind of where I have a problem. What I kind of see with that is we need to look into different things, like I said, with you know, kind of redistributing where we're giving all of these breaks at to corporations. And if we can adjust that a little bit, you know, maybe we can give a little bit of a burden to these people because, and, and this isn't saying that all of them are bad, not at all, and like not at all. But I'm saying as a state of Iowa, we give $611 million and just tax breaks and tax credits. And that's, that's a lot of money, and that's per year. And if we can redistribute that a little bit to you know, help a little bit the smaller businesses, which give 
you know, people to pay taxes, but on top of that, you know, make sure the businesses that we have already that do provide good jobs you, that are doing just fine, just a little bit less. I mean, that does create a lot more income and increase, you know, that desperate need to not raise taxes, but to redistribute our priorities and what businesses are struggling in the first place. So I kind of have four. So I have, you know, small business and local manufacturing, rural Iowa schools, infrastructure, and water quality. And I feel all four of these things are, you know, we depend on as, you know, citizens. We need water, you know, we need schools to help our children grow up to contribute to society. Infrastructure gets people back and forth to work. We don't live in a state where public transportation is really a thing, I guess, versus the bigger cities. And we need to get to work, but, um, and you know, our smaller businesses, you know, the, that's the heart of the community. So people don't have to travel, you know, 30, 40 miles every single day to get to work and, you know, make our community better. And, you know, I, we have a business in Centerville, CNC Machining, and they contribute a lot of money to our, you know, community. And that's just kind of an example to, you know, a small local manufacturing business that provides very good paying jobs and they contribute to society, they give good things to the community that help people and you know I want to try to expand on that. Kind of what I stress to people, uh, I, can, I consider myself a little bit of a different kind of candidate and I, I will go out and say yes I'm running as a Democrat but I do take in both Republican and Democratic ideologies. And you know what we've kind of talked about here today is you know I'm a candidate for trying to help you know, our small businesses, rural Iowa, schools, you know, infrastructure and water quality. But on top of that, you know, I personally have conservative values myself. I'm a pro-guns Democrat, which is <laughs> you typically don't see. You know, I believe people have served this country to protect that right. And, well, I'm going to do the same as well as that. And, you know, I'm also an advocate of freedom of religion and freedom of speech. And I use those two together because I don't think the government should get into what someone believes and if someone wants to be vocal about that they should have the ability to do so and you know I what I kind of say is you know I, I try to stress that a candidate for this position shouldn't be really looked at as the party but it's what they believe in and the thing is is I have the fire and passion to stand up to what is dangerous against us down here that will hurt us but on top of that I'm very open-minded and I I will listen. And the thing is, it doesn't matter if someone's Republican, it doesn't matter if they're Democrat. I'm going to listen and I'm going to be very open-minded to do something or try to help our community and my constituents. And you know, I <laughs> there are some lifetime Republicans who are getting behind me because it's I mean, I'm very open-minded. I actually listen. That's that's kind of that's my thing is, you know, I'm not just running to run, but I want to help rural Iowa. I want to do something down here and I don't think we have the leadership right now and that's why I'm standing up you know to try to help us. For the city of Ottumwa, do I think that they can do 10-10? Yes, I do. Do I think that somewhere like Centerville or Albia could do something like 10-10? That could be debated. I'm not sure with that. Uh, what my view on minimum wage is, so I got my idea from John Kasich, the Ohio governor. So I believe in a two-part minimum wage. So one of the main arguments with minimum wage is, well, you know, those jobs are for high schoolers. That's, that's the main thing that they're for. Well, my argument to that is, why are those jobs open during school hours? Someone has to do them. So what I believe is a two-part minimum wage that is a start that we could work with. So having someone 17 under making 725, but if someone is 18 up, split that, no, excuse me, have that increase to 850. And I think we could work with that as, you know, both the Republicans and Democrats to say, you know, that argument is down the drain. You know, these people, sometimes these are the only jobs that they can get. You know, someone who might be a single mother or father who has children in debt, and that's the only job they can get is a minimum wage job. You know, they should get just a little bit more. You know, if they're working 40 hours a week, I just don't think they should be living in poverty. And I would rather give them a little bit of a boost in wage than giving them, I guess, government handouts. 